To me, Bella Coola is like somewhere I would consider like growing old. It's kind of like the Squamish Rally 150 years ago, um, but bigger terrain, bigger mountains, um, bigger everything. It's got everything that Alaska has, or Whistler, or or Europe really. As far as skiing goes, it's kind of the ultimate, really. The overwhelming feeling in Bella Coola is this almost traveling back in time to a First Nations community. The First Nations beliefs and empowerment of animals and creatures through their art and through their dance and rituals is extremely powerful, so we picked up on that as soon as we got to town and it became a huge influence. No real film crews had been there for 10 years. Matchstick and TGR and all went through there and created some legendary segments. Um, and I think it was from those influences of those films growing up that it was such a big deal to us. It was where Seth Morrison skied Morrison Hotel for the first time, and Morrison Hotel was, ended up playing a huge part in the movie. And the reason no film crews had been there for 10 years is because the last guy who skied for film on Morrison Hotel died of a head injury. We knew the Morrison Hotel was, uh, was in the cards for lines to ski. We hadn't seen it, so we didn't really know what to expect. I knew Woody, our guide, was kind of tentative on taking us there too quick because it was, it was big and we were trying to get free ride shots. We wanted to ski stuff that we knew we could ski fast and make look good. It's incredibly rare for everything to come together. And that, that window of blue that we had in Bella Coola was truly the most epic window of shooting that I've ever seen in my life. It was the biggest season in 30 years out there, and it was stable. Here we are, Expedition 2012, and uh, we're at Morrison Hotel, Bella Coola, looking at awesome looking spines. I guess uh, they're super filled in, and now it's very quiet, but in five minutes it's gonna be not so quiet. It's gonna have some sick spines for breakfast. We were working with the dream team, J.P. O'Claire, Kai Peterson, and Callum Pettit. All of them threw down some of the best skiing I've ever seen them do. Uh, it was totally mind-blowing. Um, it seemed like every line, they got more confident in every line. The snow conditions seemed to get better. They started understanding their sloughs better. Kai Abelakula was just incredible to see. Like, I mean, when he skied Morrison Hotel, the same line Seth skied down, and he skied it down in like 14 seconds and had his slough pouring off every facet of the mountain, and that's the way Kai skis, and that's why it's so fun to watch him ski. It's because he's like, if it's good and it's on, he'll show you stuff you never thought was possible before. You just have way more to pay attention to when each turn creates, like, hundreds of pounds of moving snow, you know what I mean? Dealing with these sloughs that you're creating is like a whole other mental game. So it raises the stakes, it makes the emotions way higher, it makes it way scarier to watch, way scarier to ski. I can't even imagine how hard it is for an athlete to just look at a line from a helicopter, be like, okay, there I am, and then be on top looking down it and be able to predict what they have to do and, and pull it off successfully. So, totally understandably, Callum like scoped that line it's one of the hairiest, steepest, craziest spine lines I've ever seen anyone attempt. When you're scoping lines, it always looks different from different angles, so from the bird I thought it was doable, and once I stepped on it, it was just a lot steeper, and realized that the slough was gonna be uh, kind of messing with me for skiing it properly, so I just had to ski down really slow, let the slough go ahead of me, and then yeah, just exit out, played it safe. Sometimes you gotta just go with your gut feeling. I was pretty confident at that point because I knew the conditions were stable and obviously super jacked after skiing one of the best lines of the year for me. I wanted to get back up there and just rebate one Callum tried that was like kind of a technical line and uh, kind of involved like a bit of like sort of my style of like spine riding. And I knew I could ski the, the, the top flank of the spine, which was knifey, and let all my slough go to the right off a big cliff. And everything ended up in one gully. Basically I had to transfer eventually off that big spine into like a flute 
kind of face of like three other spines and I knew that was a section where you couldn't escape it, you know? He's charging down it, sloughs pouring down on both sides. I had so much speed coming out of the, the spines above that I can't cut out here to let my slough go. I gotta get in front of it. Instantly trying to get in front of it was just too much speed. He has so much speed he goes to turn and his binding actually ripped out of his ski there. And then he's like flipping and tomahawk and then the rest of the slough from the entire run hits him. Got pushed down by all my slough and tried to be like loose and let my slough carry me over the shrens because I was mostly worried about getting sucked inside of one of the brick shrens at the bottom. I thought I was watching Kai like almost dying. I was like, oh my God, this is one of the worst crashes I've ever seen. Thought I was uh, either going into crevasse or getting buried and luckily I just banged myself up. Thank God he was okay at the bottom of the run. In that summer when we were reviewing the footage, we basically had one of the craziest crashes we'd ever seen, which we're lucky that Kai was okay on that crash. Two sort of ridges over, we have JP O'Clear skiing in the line of his life. So we were like, wow, well, JP's run is like the ultimate run. And Kai's is like the ultimate crash. I guess we've been cycling over that day in our heads ever since and, and replaying the different outcomes that could have happened. Those two shots landed perfectly to make the cycle of our movie and the discussion of our thesis, which is good decisions and bad decisions, life and death in the mountains, and into the mind. So we're very fortunate that we had that day, and uh, it, was, it became incredibly instrumental in, in what our movie ended up looking like.